Hello and welcome to another episode of the Esports Bulletin. This is episode number 77 for April 8th, 2013. I'm Sam Carlson of SpawnRoom.com. The Esports Bulletin is a daily news recap that covers the latest and greatest in esports from giants like League of Legends to smaller niche communities like Enemy Territory. Uh, we seek out and share the most relevant and exciting news from all these different esports scenes. We are the fastest and most efficient way to keep up with esports. Also, if you'd like a shout out or you need to share some sort of important news item, tweet at Spawn Room or leave a comment below and I will work it into a future episode. Okay. So we got some exciting news today. And we'll get the video going as always. StarCraft 2 fans can get pumped up for another day of the Acer Team Story Cup with matches between Millennium and MVP taking place this morning since it is on EU time. Uh, 14 CET is actually 7 a.m., so it's probably already uh, started. Yep, it's already been like an hour into of game, so definitely go check that out or you'll probably have to catch VODs later. Um, the league will continue running um, until, or it'll continue running today and then on April 12th and 13th and then the 16th and then on into the future. They, I think those dates are like to be announced yet. Uh, you can find more at acer.taketv.net. Uh, but that's not all we have for StarCraft fans today, with the 2013 SK Planet Pro League Round 4 continuing strong with matches between SK Telcom T1 and Samsung Khan and KT Rolster and STX Soul. Um, actually, these matches have probably already been played and over because they're in Korean time, so you'll probably have to just catch the VODs. Um, you can find those at Twitch TV forward slash SC2 Pro League. Next up for Dota 2 fans, the Premier League kicks off at 20 CET, that's 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, with games between Team Liquid and Mouse Sports. You'll also be able to catch exciting games all, uh, all week with matches from Virtus Pro, No Tidehunter, Empire Fnatic, and a whole bunch more. Or actually, not a whole bunch more, just a few more. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can pick up a uh, ticket for um, the Dota client in-game, or you can enjoy um, these exciting matches at the stream, twitch.tv forward slash the Premier League. And lastly, for you like niche esports fans and players out there, uh, at least on the NA side, this is probably pretty popular in Europe, but the World of Tanks Pro League by the ESL has matches scheduled today and Thursday with... Um, uh, uh, their go for series for World of Tanks um, this weekend, so there's plenty of that action if you're into it. Also, check out the show that's um, showing right now, which is um, the World of Tanks like esports show that the company is putting on. So that's really cool that their um, the developer is involved in a show like this. You know, very nice. Alrighty, moving on. Um. Let's see, what do we got? Upcoming events for April 9th through the 14th. Uh, Major League Gaming is running their Heart of the Swarm Winter Exhibition Tournament Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. EDT um, with their show Rules of Engagement following shortly after. Uh, continuing with StarCraft, Gum TV as always is airing high quality matches from the 2013 WCS season. Uh, one GSL CODES round of 32 April 9th through the 11th and the 2013 GSTL season one uh, group stage April 12th and 13th. Uh, in League of Legends, the Solo Mid-European Invitational Finals will take place on April 9th between Meet Your Makers and Esports for Life. Uh, there are also a variety of Asian-based leagues, uh, league tournaments going on, like the Gigabyte Stars War League, Season 2, April 9th and 10th, Olympus Champions, Spring 2013, I think that's the OGN Law one, uh, April 10th, 12th, and 13th, NVIDIA Game Festival 2013 qualifiers, April 11th, and of course the North American League of Legends Championship Series, uh, that'll be on April 11th and 12th, so whole bunch of league action um, to look forward to this week. Evil Genius's Raid Call Dota 2 League Finals uh, will air April 9th and 10th this week with exciting matches between the four remaining teams, Empire, Dignitas, Fnatic, and Team Liquid. The G1 Champions League has Dota 2 matches running April 9th, 10th, and 11th. And DreamHack is hosting the Dota 2 Invitational Playoff matches on April 11th and this weekend. Also, don't forget that there is the launch of the Shoot, uh, Shoot Mania game this week on April 10th, and because of that, there is a ton of Shoot Mania tournaments by all sorts of organizations all over the world. If you check below in the video description, there will be the link to the website, and you can, they got the world map, and they got all these pins everywhere, and you can click and, and find out like what event it is. I think they even have like a, just a big list of all the different live streams and stuff, so that's pretty cool. 
Um, and lastly, this weekend, just this weekend, you'll want to check, uh, you know, you'll want to schedule time so you can watch the Raid Call EMS1 Counter Strike Global Offensive Finals, the Green of Premier League for League of Legends, and the Tencent Law Pro League 2013 Spring Season. Um, that'll be going on. So it's another busy week in esports, as always. Uh, and remember that all of these events um, and more can be found on Spawn Room. If you go on the bottom bar there, it says calendar. You can click it, and I keep that updated with everything I add to the show. So everything I mention is on there. All right, now for the headlines. And we've got a new addition to the headlines this time. Scoreboards! <laughs> Uh, first up is the Call of Duty Championship, which took place this past weekend. It was uh, pretty intense and a successful tournament overall with tons of matches between the world's best 32 teams. Um, the finals topped about 120k concurrent viewers on Twitch TV. I don't know if that includes Xbox Live. I would assume it does. Um, but either way, 120,000 is pretty good for um, you know console esports turnout. Uh, the production value was pretty solid, uh, professional casters all seemed good, good streaming quality, little downtime, um, yeah, overall it was good. The only weird thing was the finals ceremony, which was a, it was a little bizarre, um, the guy who was talking seemed really nervous, uh, people were kind of like flailing their arms about a little bit, and uh, it was like, they were standing right next to the trophy, and I was just like, oh my god, this is going to be so awkward, because someone's going to hit the trophy and smash it on the floor. Luckily, that did not happen, thank god. Um, they also did this thing where they were blasting smoke in the air, and I think at one point it like hit one of the players in the face, kind of, and like looked like it was going to blow his hat off. I don't, it was just kind of weird ending. It was, it was definitely not as polished as some of the other events uh, like event hosters like MLG and DreamHack and stuff like that. Um, but overall, the tournament was good. I think people had fun. It was, you know, interesting and all that. Uh, people will also be talking about the Star Ladder Season 5 Finals for Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Dota 2, which also took place this weekend. Uh, stream saw roughly 50 to 60k concurrent for, I think, both of the tournaments. Um, that was English streams. I think if you combined the Russian streams... Um, and whatever other streams there were, it might have been uh, 100k plus, I, you know, I didn't like add them up, but for the English streams, 50, 60, 60k concurrent for the finals, that's pretty good. Um, the CSGO finals were really epic, I had a lot of fun watching that, Virtus Pro upset uh, uh, Ninja in Pajamas, six month and nine day straight winning streak, according to a tweet by Rod Slasher Breslau, and the Dota 2 finals left No Tide Hunter walking away with first place victory, Fnatic, Virtus Pro, and Team Empire following up respectively with exciting matches to close out the tournament. Um, VODs of the tournament are available on uh, Twitch TV forward slash Star Ladder 1, and actually if you replace the one with 2345, I think you can find other content, although I'm not sure if that's from this tournament or not. You'll have to take a peek. Alright, next up, Canada's West Coast fighting game community was also treated to a tournament this weekend. Uh, this time it was the April Duels 2 in Vancouver with matches from pro players in King of Fighters 13, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Super Street Fighter 4, and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The final saw approximately 11 to 12k concurrent for viewership, um, which seems a little low compared to, you know, maybe some other bigger fighting game community events, but not bad, I guess. Um, streaming was courtesy of Canada Cup Gaming, but unfortunately, if you didn't catch the tournament live, the VODs are locked behind a subscriber paywall. Um, it's like $8.95 for subscription, so that kind of sucks. Um, some people were pretty pissed about that, but uh, what are you going to do? And the last bracket we've got is from the IGN $100,000 Shoot Mania Elite Finals Tournament. Um, that took place in San Francisco this weekend um, with some of the top Shoot Mania players uh, from around the world in attendance. Um, the finals only saw about 1 to 2k concurrent um, for viewerships, which probably goes to show how the competitive scene feels about this game, i.e. they aren't that interested. But um, there's definitely a niche audience there, probably uh, maybe similar to like Tribes Ascend or Quake Live, or at least Quake Live a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, a bit smaller, but... Um, good tournament overall. Uh, okay, so before we close out this section, I would also like to remind you that if you follow at Spawn Rooms, the Twitter, um, 
I also I post like all of these events, like the event reminders, registration for amateur tournaments and things like that, um, new esports shows and websites that I s discover, all sorts of stuff like that. You can find on at Spawn Room. I even mention tournaments like um, that weren't that aren't mentioned in the show, like just smaller ones and stuff like that. So there were um, this, for instance, this past weekend there were other fighting game. Uh, tournaments, um, stuff for StarCraft II, Tribes Ascend, um, Urban Terror, which is like super niche, <laughs> um, various esports shows, Team Fortress 2, and like a whole bunch more stuff. So definitely go check it out if you want to um, have like a nice reliable way of keeping up with the whole esports world, you know. Okay. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Esports Bulletin. Thank you very much for watching. As always, um, consider subscribing above. Uh, later in this week, I, ha I will probably be doing at least one, maybe more, of the Getting to Know Esports interview series, so keep an eye on YouTube for those interviews. Um, one will be with the guy who runs Impulse Esports, or the Indie, t indie StarCraft Team League. Um, uh, one is with Sam SC2, the StarCraft 2 caster, and I'm also talking to someone from Heartland Esports, which is like a, I think that was the non-profit organization, I'll have to double-check that, but... Um, yeah, so that should be fun. Also, more esports bulletins in the week. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, as always, and see you next time.